Shalom and welcome to OCN University. This is our new session and we are so glad that you have joined us and we have our team in the audience taking the classes and they are joining us too. Let's give it up, everyone. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I, I want you to just welcome all the rest of the people around the world that are joining us in this awesome, awesome OCN University. Let's just tell them shalom. Shalom. Amen, amen, amen. And I want to begin with telling us first the mission. Uh, this is uh, the segment we call the School of Ministry within the university, and it is to equip men. We can show that on the screen. It is to equip men and women by the word and through the grace of God to become empowered men and women that will reign, rule, and have dominion right here on this earth. And I believe that that is the perfect will of God. And we also want to read our foundational scripture. And we are going to begin with uh, Minister Fred. And that is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. So those are few that are watching us from around the world, especially our different churches and ministries around the world. We are thanking God for you. Those watching us from the Facebook, we want you to send us um, some information. Let us know that you're watching and you're being blessed. Amen. Okay, now, Minister Fred. Amen. Praise the Lord. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And we're going to uh, have the same scripture from the Amplified. I want you to listen carefully so that um, you will know exactly the, the, the reason and the goal and the vision why we are doing what we are doing. We want to reach multitudes around the world. We want to be able to do this at the same time. And the Lord has given us ample opportunity to be able to come to you with the word of God, teaching the word of God, precept by precept, step by step. And uh, we know you're going to be so blessed. So let's hear from Evangelist Brody the same scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Yes. All scripture is God's breath given by divine inspiration. Okay. Let, let, let's, let's hear that. All scripture is God's breath. breath. My goodness. Okay, go ahead. Given by divine inspiration mm. and is profitable for instruction. For conviction. Okay, let, let's, let's do that one more time. So the scriptures are supposed to profit us. They are for instructions and, and go ahead. For conviction of for sin. For conviction of sin. For correction. For correction. Of error and restoration. Of error obedience. and restoration. So we should be able to receive restoration, guidance, counsel by the teaching of the word. Amen. And that's why we want to be able to bring the OCN University to wherever you are around the world. Because the Word of God is God Himself. The Word of God and God, they are one. And from hearing the Word of God and seeing what has happened in the time past, in the lives of the men and the women of old, we can be corrected. We can be able to have a good and profitable life. God wants us to profit in this life by and through his word. Amen. Okay, so we have uh, a new session. And uh, I want to first go through, uh, actually we're calling this uh, orientation. And um, we want to talk about the area that we are going to be covering. So the first segments for this session is going to be on spiritual lifestyle okay now lifestyle in the holy ghost you may say it's going to be how we can be able to have a very stable lifestyle in the holy ghost you know jesus christ is now at the right hand of the father and the one that is with us here on this earth is who the holy spirit so we want to go through this uh, the the course uh, syllabus with you let's begin actually um with what we have on the screen 
So we are going to deal with the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I want everyone to read that with me, John chapter 16, verse 7. I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, comforter, counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Amen. And this is Jesus Christ himself speaking to us that it's very, very important that he goes away so that he can send who to us? The Holy Spirit. And so we're going to be dealing with the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the first, this first session, and it's going to go on to, um, we're going to complete this session about June time frame. I don't want to specify uh, the, the exact dates because some of you may be watching us from around the world and uh, you may watch us at an, another uh, year and the same classes will be used. So the word of God is never stale. So, but I, I just want to say that this first segment is going to be um, a three month segment. And we're going to have 14 classes and uh, this is um, the um, orientation class. And we want to tell you the things that we are going to cover um, and also all that is involved. Now, you may be watching us and you want to participate. Okay? And we are giving this to you free of charge. So you can participate now if you want the materials. You send us, we are hoping that you will get the materials, then we will tell you what's involved to get the materials. And all you need to do is to write us, you can write us on our PO box, it's showing right there on the screen, and uh, you can also write us through the uh, website, and then we will tell you what's involved. And all the certificates, whatever we're going to offer, you will also get the same, okay? The primary thing right now is that we want to get the word of God to you. And uh, we want you to be enriched. We want you to uh, receive from the Holy Spirit whatever he has for you. And we want you to live a, a life that's full of abundance. Okay, so that's for those that are watching us um, from the uh, different parts of the world. And um, so what do we need? What's the requirement? The requirement is for you to complete the course. That's really what it is. We desire for you to complete the course and um, we are going to get to the assignments in a few seconds. The pre-assessment, the student will accept the responsibility of completing all of the 101 courses. Now, what we call this is, um, what is it called again? What is it called again, those in my class? Spiritual lifestyle, very good, spiritual lifestyle. And so this is spiritual lifestyle, and it is SL101. Spiritual lifestyle, that's SL101. So those of you that have your notebooks, you may want to make sure that that is what you have in your notebook, SL101. So this class is SL101, and we're beginning with the course title, Ministry of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, remember I said that today is orientation, so we're not getting into the heavy-duty part of uh, teaching yet. Uh, we're just going to go through the orientation. We want you to be part of this. So this is SL. Now, um, my administrator here, let me know, speak up loud if I need to make any changes. It's SL101, correct? Okay. So just SL101. That's what we... Uh, agreed on. So now the instructional activities. So we are looking at the student will view the teachings uh, for this course online. We are working on our website for the university, but in the time being, we are going to have all the classes on the YouTube, and uh, you can also go to our own uh, OCNbroadcasting.com and you can, that will navigate you to where you can get the classes, okay? And the students will refer to the materials as we direct. I am not going to be the only instructor for this segment of the Ministry of the Holy Spirit. I am your instructor. I'm Bishop Nikki Ogamba. And um, the student will also successfully submit 
whatever the responses are, your answers to the questions or your projects, you, you submit that online and you can send that also to our PO box. That's uh, OCN uh, PO Box 45465, Los Angeles, California 90045. Okay, and for those of you that are in the class, you can bring your um, your uh, responses and your materials, your projects to class. Okay, now I want to go straight to the materials. Let's go. Those of you in the class, let's go to the materials um, now. We have the number one material that you need is what? The Bible. Okay? <laughs> we want you to come to class every week with your Bible. And um, I prefer that we use the King James Version for everyone. And I will encourage everyone in this class and those that are watching, buy a concordance. Get a Bible dictionary. As a matter of fact, you can get a good, nice Bible that has the concordance and it has the dictionary it, it may be a little pricey but it's a very good investment so I'm going to ask you to consider to uh, give yourself a good nice uh, birthday birthday present and buy yourself a good Bible amen it, it's it's worth it it's worth the investment and um, and I, I will also provide you with a workbook over here uh, we will do that every week. You'll get the new materials weekly. And I have a book on the Holy Spirit that I would like every one of you to uh, read before the end of the, of the course here. Uh, my administrator and I are working to make sure we have that book ready for you. And then, of course, you know, you bring to your class your notebook, your pen. What I desire is that I like when you, when you see people in the class writing. It makes you happy. It makes every professor, every lecturer happy. That means that you're getting something out of it, okay? So I encourage you to take notes. Okay. Um, let's see. Completion, right? Students successfully completing this course, you will receive for this class alone, Ministry of the Holy Spirit, you will receive an acknowledgement of course completion and um, you will successfully have um, completed 28 courses of study within this module. And then um, when you do that, we will give you OCN University Certificate of Achievement. So we are working on making sure that um, every one of you that's here, that none of you will drop out. Amen. Nobody will drop out, and we want to have a big time celebration. And as we go further, we are looking at getting complete accreditation so that we can be able to offer up to even PhD level uh, in this university. Somebody shout amen. amen. Okay. And so, those of you that are watching, you may be a pastor and you want to join us. And you want your leaders to, uh, to be able to receive um, the uh, certificate also. And you want to um, have your leaders or yourself or other members of your church. We're asking you to give us a call. And uh, you can also uh, go to our website. And uh, you can send us an email. Whichever one that's good for you. Or send us a letter. We want to hear from you. So this is open to all ministries. Okay. We teach the full gospel. We teach the full gospel. Now, for the assignments and the grades, I want to go through that. Let's, um, let's look at that. those of you that are in the class here. We have, um, you have the course syllabus, so let's talk about that a little bit. So I'm looking at the class participation and reading whatever we have asked you to read. I'm looking at that as 30% of the grade. Okay? I, I, I think uh, coming to... To class is important, and that's why the grade is you know, very high. 30% of the grade um, is uh, what you all will get just for being in class. Just being in class, okay, and participating. And uh, we, we are going to be asking questions and giving you opportunity to ask questions, and I'll be asking you. It's going to be very interactive starting today. So if you have any questions, just raise your hand, and uh, we have mics over there so we can be able to. You may be asking questions that those online want to ask, and they haven't been able to, you know, get to us yet. So you can ask questions, um, and uh, let me know. Just raise your hand, and I'll see your hand. Okay, the assignments and the grade for the assignments. So we have... Um, 
I, I talked about reading and the class, uh, coming to class is 30%, right? Okay, now we have research paper. I like to show um, that everyone in my class, that you can write your papers. You can do research. And you can be able to organize yourself and um, be disciplined, right, to come up with papers and, and talk about it. So we're going to do that, and that's 45% of the final grade. So actually now I told you what we're going to be doing. We're doing um, the first segment is Ministry of the Holy Spirit. You can begin to allow the Holy Ghost to give you some points, some outlines, the areas that he wants you to work on, starting even today. Even as I'm speaking right now, he'll start ministering to you. So you can start writing in your notebook the things that you want to uh, uh, zero into. Now, the student is to write a research paper of 4,000 words. And um, it can be the study of a significant passage from the Bible on the Holy Spirit. Okay? Or the study of a particular theme, but it must relate to the Holy Spirit. In other words, don't come and tell me you want to write on Abraham. And I'm teaching on the uh, Holy Spirit. Don't do that. Okay? We're going to work together. Okay? So this segment is on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So you can write on anything that relates to the Holy Spirit. Is that, is that clear? Amen. Okay, okay. So the paper is to be primarily descriptive and directed to the relevance of the topic that we are studying. Okay? And uh, for, the, uh, for the paper, we want you to, if you quote from any book or any author, anyone, please, we want to make sure there's no plagiarism. We want to make sure that we recognize those people. Okay? So you can put that in the quote and then put it in your bibliography. Make a reference. This is from so-so-and-so person and this from this book. We want to give honor to whom honor is due. Okay, so I don't mind you quoting from books or CD, but let's put that in quote and put the name where you got it from. Is that, is that clear? Okay. And um, I want the, uh, the, the research paper uh, due to me um, uh, June 3rd for this class. Okay. So for those of you that are watching also and you're part of us, we want you to do likewise. Okay. So basically, we are looking at three weeks before the end of this segment. So that will give us enough time to be able to go through and I'll read all, all, all the uh, papers. And um, what I would like is also to talk to you individually, talk to you, or we can do a collective um, discussion whereby you can have uh, five minutes to defend what you wrote. Just talk to what you wrote. Okay? And those of you that are online, we will... Just receive your package, and I will give you a call and go through your research paper as well, okay? And your research paper. Again, let me say this. Nobody fails, okay? Nobody fails. It's just for us to take time to seek the Lord and be able to meditate. My whole uh, goal here is for us to get more in-depth into studying the Word. Because the wind will blow. The storm will come. But you want to know beyond every shadow of doubt, no matter what storm of life comes, you will stand. Mm -hmm. And after you stand, you stand some more. How will you do that? By the word of God. It is the word of God that you know that sets you free. Somebody hearing me? So this is not a mental exercise or to say, uh, I have this number of degrees and what have you. No, it's to get us to dive into more of the word of God. Amen? Okay, so the research paper is 45%. And uh, then the last one is the final exam. The final exam is 25%. So the student is to write a take-home final exam. So we, I will give you take-home final exam. The exam will give the student an opportunity to demonstrate their learning in the course through responses to several reflective questions. So all the questions that I will give you to take home will be based on what we did in the class. 
okay? And sometimes, even when I give you the materials, the Holy Spirit will lead me to say things that may not be in the material. So that's when you want to write down because when I give you the questions, you have all those things already. Okay? So the instructions for the final exam will be given at the end of the course, and the exam shall be sent directly to the instructor. That's me, no later than 24th of uh, June. Okay? So when you look at the summary of the assignments and the grading, you, you see that uh, we have the class participation and reading, 30%. And then we have the research paper, 45%. And then we have the final exam, 25%. And when you add the whole thing, that gives us what? That's 100%, okay? Okay, so at this time, let's just take a break real quick. And then we'll be right back. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome right back. And uh, I want to go through uh, some of the areas we're going to be covering. So uh, we have um, on the screen, let's, let's put that up. So we're going to begin with the person of the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit. I would like us to read this uh, together. So this portion of the class is about getting to know the Holy Spirit and understand how he functions in his power through the Bible. This includes how he functions in the lives of men and women in the scripture. This also includes how he functions and will function with us as believers. Amen? So I want someone to tell me in the class, what do you want to see and what do you want to learn about the person of the Holy Spirit. Anyone can, can talk to me. Uh, we're talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. What do you want to see and what do you want to learn? There's a mic right there. You can pass it on. Raise your hand if you, okay, we'll start over there. My question regarding the person of the Holy Spirit would be learning how to treat him like a person. Amen. Because for most of us, the Holy Spirit is a spirit. Yeah. He's not tangible. He's yeah. not sitting right next to me. Yeah. And yet he's a person. Amen. So I would Amen. like to see how we can actually treat him like a person. Amen, amen, amen. And that's what we're going to be covering. We're going to be covering the fact that he has emotions. Amen. He has feelings. Very powerful. Not only that some people think his spirit so it's like spooky, right? Spooky something, spooky. But the truth is that we are tripod beings. We are spirits too. And really our real us is spirit. Amen. And so we're going to be covering this. And uh, you know when the Bible says quench not the Holy Spirit. Okay. And grieve not the Holy Spirit. Because he has emotions. He's person. Very good. Who else has something? Yes sir. My question is how do I distinctly and clearly know when it is the Holy Spirit? That is speaking and leading me and guiding me and not just my own thoughts or ideas. Amen. Oh, my God. I think you're speaking for millions of people. <laughs> Amen. So we want to learn how we can assure that the Holy Spirit is leading us, that he is guiding us, that it's not just our mental faculty. Amen. Amen. And not only that, we're going to do exercises on that. Amen. 
Amen. We're going to be able to prophesy to one another. Amen. And we will see that come to pass. Amen. And we will be able to give words of knowledge to one another. And they will say, indeed, what you are saying is what has happened. Amen. Amen. We will exercise all that. Amen. Who else has something you want to learn about the personal? Yes, right behind you, Pastor Sarah. Yes, I want to know more about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The yeah. infilling the of, the of the Holy Spirit. It's, of the, 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 um, the rivers of living water. Oh, my, my. That's what I want. Amen, amen. The rivers of living water, when Jesus talked about, you know, he is the one that will come and out of our belly will begin to flow rivers of living water. And we're going to discuss that because when rivers are flowing, what happens? The trees and the leaves are healthy and the leaves are green and there's a lot of fruit. Amen, amen. Who else? You, I, want you, I want to hear from you. You're helping not just yourself. You're helping the people that are around the world that are watching right now. They may have questions, and the Holy Ghost is putting that in your heart so that you can ask the questions that they have. You have another one? Yes, go for it. The question I want to ask is, a lot of times when people have come to Christ and accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, they are told that they need to be speaking in tongues immediately. And what if that does not happen to the individual right away? Is that person still saved? Wow. Oh, my, 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 my. We need to write down all these questions. Yes, and we're going to have Desiree next. But let me talk about that just briefly. So we want to deal with is speaking in tongues part of being born again? And well, I'll say up front, the answer is no. But we want to also find out if you're not speaking in tongues, are you really filled with the Holy Ghost? And the answer is yes. So how come they are not speaking in tongues? And we will discuss all that. Amen. 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 Desiree. <laughs> Good morning. I yeah. Thank you for today. Yeah. I had the question, it was also about tongues. I remember being born again. Yeah. And um, I heard that language. And Bishop was like, oh, my daughter, come here. You have it in your stomach. I said, what do I have in my stomach? <laughs> and then he said, it's there. Just say it. Say it. And I started saying, you kill a masaki. Then I said, oh, my God, is she trying to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> but it's evidence that you are saved. It's evidence that you are saved. And it is proof that the living waters of Jesus Christ is in you. Amen, amen, amen. And, uh, you know, we, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but she's touching on a lot of things that we're going to be teaching. In other words, you know, you are in control. And uh, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you have to begin to step out and allow the Holy Spirit to bring those words out of you. And we will cover all those things in details. Amen. And we have, uh, okay, label there, and then we'll come to um, evangelists. Yes. Does speaking in tongue guarantee that you are saved? Okay. Amen. Another question. <laughs> speaking in tongues, does that guarantee you that you are saved? And I can say right away the answer is no. And why? Because everything that is real, there's a counterfeit. So there are people that are not born again that also speak in tongues. You may say, what? Yeah, I came from that country. I came from that place where unbelievers that serve voodoo, they speak in tongues. Yeah, you mean their language? No, a language that they didn't study. They speak in tongues, but it's all the devil. So can you speak in tongues and not be born again? The answer is yes. And we are going to talk about that some more. Amen. And we have evangelism, buddy. Uh, good morning. Um, my question was pretty much answered just a few minutes ago. Yeah. People from different uh, ethnicities yes. have a second and third language, and some of them confess that to be the Holy Spirit when they're speaking in their own dialect. Oh, no. Okay, okay. So can, how do we, di well, distinguish that from... The Holy Spirit. Okay, very good, very good question. So the individuals that are speaking in their own dialect will know it's not a new language. 
They will know they haven't received the new language. But somebody that's listening to them that does not know that that is their dialect may think it's tongues. But the individual will know that's not a new language. Now, the very first time that the believers spoke in tongues in Acts chapter 2, the very first time, we know that the people that gathered in Jerusalem, they began to hear them in their different languages. But when, wait a minute, let me tell you what happened. They did not study the language. Those that were speaking those languages, they were given to them by the Holy Ghost. They did not learn it. They did not know how that language came about except by the Holy Spirit. So the Lord did that because 3,000 people were added to the body of Christ, to the kingdom of God in that same day, in one day. The Lord began to minister to them that gathered so that they will repent and give their lives to Christ. Is somebody hearing me? So that is very, very important to know. Anyone, you may, I speak more than three, four languages, but I know when I'm praying and I'm praying in tongues, I know that that's not my own dialect because what I'm hearing is not what my dialect is saying. Amen. Amen. Somebody else has another. Yes, ma'am. And uh, join us. This is very beautiful, um, beautiful questions. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. I wanted to know how do you differentiate when someone is speaking in their heavenly language and when they're not and when the Holy Spirit is effectively moving? Okay. Very, very good question. So how do we know the difference? Well, that's all that is part of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we will also be sharing. The Holy Spirit in you will also bear witness what is going on? You will know when someone is speaking in, in, their, in their own uh, language that they learn. You will know when someone is speaking in tongues, but it's not of the Holy Ghost. You will know. The Holy Spirit in you will bear witness, and you will receive word of knowledge. You will receive word of wisdom. You will be able to discern the Spirit. All these are the different gifts of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Great questions. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Deaconess uh, Marianne has a question. How do we know for sure, for sure, when we're grieving the Holy Spirit? How do we know for sure, for sure, whether you are? Grieving the Holy Spirit, when? Being in the Holy Spirit? No, grieving. Grieving. Living. Grieving. Grieving. Oh, if we are grieving the Holy Ghost. Amen. So if we are grieving the Holy Ghost, how do we know for sure, for sure, we are grieving the Holy Ghost? Again, you will know by the Holy Spirit in you. You will know by so many, so many, I'm telling you by the time we finish, the Holy Ghost is my best friend. By the time we finish this, you will have no more questions. You will know beyond every shadow of doubt whether you are grieving the Holy Ghost because there will be an unrest. There will be no peace. You will know, you will know, and he, 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 he will become so close to you. It's almost like this. Let me, let me say this. You know, you all, you all are, are, I know you very well. You all know me. I'm your bishop. If, if you start feeling, I think I did something wrong that, you know, my husband or my sister in the Lord or my bishop is not happy about, you just know. Don't you? You just know. How much more Holy Ghost does God? He, 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 will, he will make sure that you know what you're doing, okay? Because he wants the best for you. And it's not easy to grieve him. It's really not easy to grieve him. He is so loving, so compassionate. You know, he, he's, so, he's, so, he's so sweet. It's not easy to grieve him. He wants the best for us. And he's not like people that little things offend them. No, no, no. No, that, that's, I'll tell you right now, you have not grieved the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and those of you watching, be com comforted. Amen. But we will discuss. That's very good. That's a very, very good question. Amen. So we have another question. Uh, please, uh, can you give the, yes. And uh, let's see. Uh, Jack, can you get my daughter over here? Okay, go ahead and ask your question. Yes. My question is a little bit different. Uh, all the questions that they answered was, <laughs> I needed to know that. But uh, what I want to ask is that, uh, is it true that if you haven't been baptized, would you, you know, like burn in hell? 
Okay, someone else. Uh, who understood that? Okay, so, okay, say it again, ask again. Okay, my question is what I want to ask. If, if you haven't been baptized at all, would you burn in hell? Will you burn hell? Okay, so. Hell, hell. hell. Oh, will you, go, will you burn in hell? Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. If oh, burn in hell. Yes. Lord, God forbid. No, 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 no. Okay, very good, very good. So we're dealing with uh, two things here. I know that some people think you have to be baptized in water, okay, to be saved, okay? Now, we are talking about being baptized in the Holy Ghost, okay? So being baptized in the Holy Ghost, if you're not, you will not go to hell. Once you're saved, right? Requirement to go to heaven is what? Receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior, right? Yeah, only, right? Now, being filled with the Holy Ghost has nothing to do with going to heaven, okay? It's really for you to be able to live a good life here on this earth, okay? So that's one. Now, being baptized in water is... A confession that we make openly, publicly, that as Jesus Christ went to grave, was buried for three days and resurrected, and now he lives. So we are saying openly, publicly, we are not ashamed to identify with the same thing that Jesus did he went down, so we are going down. And when we come up, we are coming up in newness of life. Yes. So will you go to hell if you don't do that part? The answer is no, but if you love somebody. How many of you love the Lord Jesus? Amen. You just do it because you want to identify with what he did. Amen. And the Bible said, you know, you shall be saved and baptized. So why not do that? And then, you know, by the way, if you haven't been baptized in water and you're watching us, go to your pastor, wherever you're going to church right now. Tell them you want to be baptized in water. Amen. And anyone in this church, you haven't been baptized in water, please, uh, those of you that come and those of you that are around the area, come see me. We, we will do that. Amen. Amen. Very good question. Amen. Very powerful question. Wow. One more question. She has another one. Please give that. She has another one. So this is helping me to make sure we get all these type of questions in the class. Okay? In the lesson. In the lesson plan. Very good. She has another okay, question. Okay, that's like, uh, like I say about the speaking in tongue. I heard that if you don't learn to speak in tongue, the same thing will happen to you. Okay. Very good. Very you good know. question. So, very good question. And uh, during the teaching, I am going to go through the part of speaking in tongues. That will be covered in the next uh, two months or so. I'm going to go through, through that. First, we're going to talk about how to be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and uh, the, the evidences of being filled, and also the, the importance of being filled with the Holy Ghost, and the importance of speaking in tongues, and the power when you pray in your heavenly language. We will cover all that in this, in this class. Let me tell you, um, if you're not speaking in tongues, and anything happens to you today, you'll still go to heaven if you're born again. Amen. Amen. There's no doubt. That's no doubt. But there's so much to gain. Amen. There's so much power. There's, it's a tool that God has given to us. That's why I want to offer that to every believer. You know, we're going to Philippines and uh, the Lord began to, I've been waiting on the Lord about how to and what to minister. In Philippines, we are expecting 5,000 uh, youths to gather in one of our uh, praise and worship, festival of praise and worship night, a miracle service night. And the Lord has told me, all those that are gathered, every one of them will be filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and out of their belly will be flowing rivers of living water. Amen. Amen. It, it, it's, it's a tool that the Holy Ghost has given to us to be able to conquer the attacks of the enemy. There are times you don't know what else to do when you have done all that you know how to do for your child, for your husband, for your wife, for your supervisor, for your director, and all you do is just pray in tongues. 
you, you prayed everything you can think of you need to pray. And all you need to do is just pray. Just allow the Holy Ghost to pray through you. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 28, 26 through 28. You just allow the Holy Ghost to pray through you. Because we are limited because we are just... Um, human beings. We are limited. We are not all knowing, but God is all knowing. And the Holy Spirit, He is God. And so when we yield to Him and He prays through us, He prays the perfect prayer about situ situations. And very, very important. Amen. We have another question. You all are just uh, you're asking perfect, powerful questions. So okay. when you are um, speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. are you the one to interpret it? Very that good, tongues? very good, very good, very good, very good. <clears throat> Again, we are dealing with two areas. One is speaking in tongues for prayer. That's different. Another one is speaking in tongues to interpret to bless the church. So that is the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you can pray in tongues you can speak in tongues for yourself and you are edifying yourself, you're charging yourself up and God is hearing you. <clears throat> That's different. Now when you speak in tongues in, in, in the church or in a gathering and you are allowing yourself to be used by God to bless the people, then there must be interpretation. Let me explain it this way. It is like you have in America, United States of America, we have 10 cents. 10 cents is a nickel, right? A dime. A dime. <laughs> I said a nickel. 10 cents is two nickels. So I can get 10 cents with two nickels, right? Yeah. Or I can get it with just one, which is called a dime, Correct. right? Now, speaking in tongues with interpretation is like having... Uh, 10 cents with two nickels, nickels. right? right. Yes. But if I choose to have 10 cents with only one dime, that is bringing the message from God in prophecy, in the language that the people gathering will understand. Everybody understands English right here. So if I say, thus says the Lord, every one of you here, you are blessed you are seeing breakthrough. That is in English, and you are hearing me. Yeah. That's message from the Lord, right? Amen. So that's 10 cents, but now it came in a dime, Amen. right? If I say, and the Lord said, you are blessed. So that message came to you, how? Tongues with interpretation. Did you get that? Okay, yeah. now I spoke in tongues, but it's a message from God for the people, and I did interpret. So to answer your question, I can say, Then somebody there will say, Thus says the Lord, you are blessed. So I spoke in tongues, and you interpreted. Can that happen? The answer is yeah. yes. But Apostle Paul, by the Spirit of God, said, as you are being the one used by God to bring the message, pray that you also can interpret. interpret yes. Okay? Amen. And I say this way. Don't get up and start praying in, and uh, speaking in tongues for the message, expecting somebody else to do your job or do finish it up for you. Amen. Okay? Amen. So can someone pray and uh, uh, bring the message in tongues and somebody else interpret? The answer is... Yes, but can you bring the message in tongues and interpret? The answer is yes. 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 Is that clear? Amen. Amen. Okay, lots of nice questions. <laughs> wow, I like that. Okay, let's go to the next thing we're going to cover. So we're going to cover the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And some of you have been asking the questions on this. This portion of the class teaches and explains how to receive the Holy Spirit baptism and the evidence. So again, we're going to, is that showing on the screen so that those watching us can also be able to watch us? Yes, thank you very much. Let's just give them time to write it down. So it's going to teach, we're going to teach and explain how to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And we're not dealing with the water baptism. 
how to be baptized and how to receive the Holy Spirit baptism or be filled with the Holy Spirit and the evidence. Anyone has questions on this one? Let's talk about this. So we're going to be covering this. Let's talk about this. Who has question on this? Yes. Okay. Let's get, uh, get the mic. Yes. Does it happen immediately? As soon as you pray, as soon as you uh, accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you say, okay, now I'm going to speak in tongues. Does it happen immediately? Powerful question. You guys are so good. Make sure you're writing all these questions down. Very, very good. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, can you start speaking in tongues immediately? It depends. Everyone say it depends. It depends. Oh, that thing is on, you know, open-ended question. <laughs> it depends. Now, uh, what do I mean by it depends? It depends on the individual. It depends the individual being uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. It depends on the person ministering to you. It depends on a lot of things, you know, the background, a lot of things. So I'm going to take time a little bit. Let me talk about what I mean by all the things I just said. Number one, let me ask you a question. When you pray, do you believe that you receive your answer immediately? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. And do you have a scripture for that? Yes. yes. Throw some out one of the scriptures for me. Mark 11, 24, right? You believe. When you pray, you believe, you receive, and you shall have, right? And Luke chapter 11, when you ask, will a father ask for bread, and then the father or the mother will give a snake? The answer is no. no. The father or the mother will give whatever the child asks, right? Amen. So do you believe that the heavenly father will do the same? Yes. yes. So with that, the answer is yes. When you ask, because to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, is only in the asking. Mm -hmm. Right? So that time when you ask, do you believe that you receive? Yes. yes. But do you start speaking in tongues immediately? That's where it depends. will come in. Everybody hear that? Yes. Okay. So let's say you don't start speaking in tongues right away. Did you receive? Yes. The answer is yes, because we ask the Father. Yes. Huh? You receive because we ask the Father. Did you start speaking? Maybe, maybe not. Yes, no, they didn't speak. It, does it have to do with the Father? No. No, no. So now let's talk about the factors. Okay, let's talk about the factors. Now you remember when the Bible talks about when you believe in your heart, where? In your heart without doubting, again, Mark 11. Then when you pray, you believe that you receive and you will. That's right. Where do you believe in your heart? Is it possible that during the prayer you're not believing in your heart? That you're believing in your head? Yes. That could be a block. Yes. Did somebody get that? Yes. In that Mark 11, it also talks about not doubting. Yes. Uh, not doubting. It's, it's, Where do you doubt? In the heart. Yes. When there's a doubt in the heart, you don't speak with the mouth. Yes. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. Okay. Where there's a doubt, that means faith is not there to release the words. Amen. Somebody hearing me? Amen. Okay, so, so is it possible that you received the prayer today, you didn't speak today, and maybe you wouldn't speak until next year? The answer is yes. yes. But did you receive last year when the prayer was prayed? Yes. The answer is yes. yes. Is, that, is that clear? Yes. So that's one aspect of it. Another aspect of it is the person ministering to you. Okay may not fully know all that there is on how to administer the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Okay. Okay? And if they are not very well trained, they also may be in doubt. Yes. Somebody hearing me? Yes. They also may be in doubt. I know that uh, in the church, All Nations Living Fountains Church, you know, for those of you watching, I don't have everybody administering the Holy Spirit baptism. 
When I know somebody needs to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, it doesn't matter who is on the line, I change and I call somebody else. I call the people I know have had 100% result. Amen. Because they know how to administer the Holy Spirit. Amen. Somebody hearing me? Yes. Because sometimes you just say the word Holy Spirit, fear comes. Yes. Yes. It's like speaking tongues and you see some people, they just go stiff. <laughs> I'm going to speak in a language I don't know. Yes. So you need to get someone that really yes. understands how the Holy Spirit flows. Yes. Okay? And they have 100% guarantee on how to administer Amen. the Holy Spirit baptism. Amen. Did I answer that question? Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Who else has another question on the Holy Spirit baptism? Anybody else? Okay, let's go to the next one. Ministry of the Holy Ghost, why tongues? Let's talk about why tongues. Okay. Now, let's show that on the screen. So this portion of the class explores and introduces the validity and the importance of the believers speaking in his whole heavenly language wow. while tearing down the myths and the fears associated with speaking in other tongues. Okay, why tongues? Anyone has questions on that area? Why tongues? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's give her, let's give Ivory the, the mic. Why tongues? Okay, what are your questions? The reason why I'm asking the question is because I'm hearing a lot of um, questions coming up of why is it that people are being taught not to speak in tongues in church and I wanted to know why is it so important to speak in tongues okay some people are taught not to speak in tongues I, ca I can tell you right now that's that's true in many churches and uh, uh, now let me explain a little bit where that ca uh, came about yep. <laughs> there were people that are not um, in the past, let's say in the past, no more, no more in a lot of churches now. They, they, they were not really taught appropriately how uh, this is supposed to be done. And even Apostle Paul wrote about it. You know, somebody over there is speaking in tongues loud, another person over there is speaking in tongues loud. And so you have all this commotion going on. No order, okay? And so a lot of times, many pastors shy away from, from that. They don't want any, any, anything that is going to cause any problem in their church, so they shut it down. Okay? They just shut it down. Uh, but because there are commotions going on, you don't want to now go to the other end and shut down things. Okay? Because these things are in the, in the scripture. They are in the word. Now, when people prophesy in the church, the Bible tells us if you are bringing forth message, in tongues with interpretation. It says you can have up to three, three people. people. That's right. Up to three people. Right. And in, in some churches in the past, some people just, well, I want to also, if somebody needs to hear my own. Okay? So you've done three people, they have finished, they spoke in tongues, interpreted, one, two, three. You see another fourth person comes up, another fifth person comes up, they want their own message to be heard. Yes. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? And so what has happened is that some churches now say, you know what, no more. Mm -hmm. Keep your message. And that's one of the things I have seen. But I believe in order. The Bible says, let all things be done decently Amen. and in order. And again, you have some churches where because of the shutdown, when someone starts speaking in tongues, you have the ushers go over there and go move the person out. I don't know if you guys have yes. heard of those things. Oh, yeah. Okay. The Bible tells us, let someone judge. If someone is speaking in tongues and you're not sure what they're going to say, it's okay. When they finish and it's not in line with the word of God, then the minister in the church, we have ministers in the church that are ordained ministers that work with us. Somebody will come up and say, that is not from the Lord. We correct it. We have a way to correct it without the person 
feeling anything uh, terrible. But don't shut down the word of the Lord coming as a message through the people. We want to stir up the gifts that God has given to people and not shut it down. Somebody hearing me? Does that, does that help answer your question? We, we, we don't want to shut that down. So that's one of the reasons why some churches shut down people speaking in tongues. Another thing is some churches will say, you know, when we pray, for instance, when we do praise and worship, you have heard people like uh, Reverend Ken or Pastor Mimi, after they finish worship in English, they'll go on to start worshiping in your heavenly language. And they are leading the people in the church. That's it. That's in, in accordance with the word of the Lord in 1 Corinthians. He says, you can sing in understanding and you can also sing in your heavenly language. So we are, it's okay to loudly pray in tongues or loudly sing in tongues in the church together. And we see that in, in all nations. Reverend Ken or Pastor Mimi, they'll get in, into worship and at the end they'll now begin to worship the Lord in tongues. And everybody we are all supposed to join. Amen? Amen. And that is okay. Now some churches will say, well, when you, when you do anything in tongues, interpret. But that's not true. That's when you are bringing a message. Amen. That's different. You can worship the Lord in tongues. Once you're not doing it outside what is going on in the church, can you bring a message in tongues, yes. singing? Yes, you can. That's right. Yes. You can bring a message singing. So you sing in tongues, and then you interpret also in the singing. Amen. And it's beautiful when it's from the Lord. Amen. 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 Somebody else has another question. Yes, sir. Um, one of the questions I've heard, I haven't heard it in quite some time now, is that, one of the reasons that they don't believe that uh, speaking in tongues is still relevant is that that ended that was only for when the apostles were around. I know, no I know. more apostles around. I so know. that all ended when the apostles were around. I no know. So. I heard that part. Give Pastor Sarah. And please, no gifts have, have been done away with. How many of you believe in miracles? Yeah. I believe in miracles. That's one of the gifts. How many of you believe in the gifts of healing? I believe in the gifts of healing. Amen. amen, amen, amen. And tomorrow, by the way, is our healing service. And please invite people. Those of you watching, if, you're, if you are in the Los Angeles area, please come join us. Come join us, 11 o'clock service on Sunday morning service. And that uh, is 4347 11th Avenue, Los Angeles, California, 90008. Come join us. We have one more question, and believe it or not, we're almost out of time, but I want that question to be heard. Yes. Hey, I hope on this course that you've addressed the fear factor. There's a fear factor, there's a resistance to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, to yes. speaking in tongues. Yes, yes, so yes. So that you can address that. Yes, I will address the fear factor and the resistance. And again, you know, it's all the different cultures. The things we have heard in the past, in some churches, in some places, and how these have been abused by one segment to the other. So it's like... No, keep that away from me. No, 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 no. But I'm telling you, there's so much beauty Amen. that God has already blessed us with, and Amen. we are going to maximize every one of the gifts that God has given Amen. to us. Amen? Amen? Now, have you been blessed? Amen. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I have been blessed. And the last one is the tongues in prayer. The purpose of this course is to provide students with understanding, allowing the Holy Ghost to pray through us the perfect prayer Amen. and we're going to be dealing with this uh the next week so tune in with us this same time next week and you will have no regrets we'll not get in in depth of all these different areas we talked about today until next time know this god loves you and so do we and we want to hear from you please tell them shalom everyone shalom.